Oh my god, that's amazing. This final tattoo shows that I am the best female in Ink Master history. I do colored portraits all the time, but the judges all love black and gray more than color. This is $100,000, and I would feel a lot more comfortable if we were doing this in black and gray. I mean, I don't mind it in black and white. I don't. You can still capture him in it. While one artist went from a nobody to charging over $200 every hour, another who has over 290,000 followers might replace one of Ink Master's judges. Wondering who? Stay tuned to find out. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Film Insight channel. In today's video, we're going to discuss some tattoo artists who went on to have successful careers. So sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get straight into the content guys. We're starting things off with a tattoo artist who started inking himself at the age of 13. We're talking about DJ Tambi. My name's DJ Tambi. I've been tattooing for over 20 years. I really like the, the fatter grips. It's more ergonomic and it's just, just nicer on the hand. DJ Tambi has more than 20 years of expertise and an equal share of awards. He began his career in Rochester, New York before moving to Las Vegas and beginning to work at Bad Apple Tattoo. Tambi rose to fame after competing in Season 2 and ranked in second place. With time, he significantly raised his game by being the first ever two-time winner of the show. Tambi has traveled the nation, participating in numerous conventions, and has also won numerous accolades. Speaking on the fact that he started very young in an interview, he said, Younger, probably around eight years old, I got into graffiti. I can remember me as an eight-year-old kid actually hopping on to the slow-moving train to downtown to go paint. In the final round of the ninth season, based on the live six-hour tattoo, Twitter followers selected Black Cobra tattoos represented by Gady McGowan and Matt Oba as one of the top two. On the other hand, the judges selected Old Town Inc. represented by Aaron Irwin and Tabby himself. In a dramatic finale, Old Town Inc. was chosen as the top shot by the judges. This was based on the 35-hour Master Canvas tattoo, giving DJ Tambi the win along with Aaron Irwin. The 10th season of Ink Master Return of the Masters also proved to be a success for Tambi as he made his return to clutch yet another Ink Master title. The idea behind this season was to have three teams of six artists led by three Ink Master champions, Steve Teft, Anthony Michaels, and Tambi, winners of season 2, 7, and 9. The coaches competed in the first ever master face-off during the live finale, with the winner taking home $100,000. DJ Tambi won the first master face-off, making him the first and only person to do so in two straight seasons. Tambi's resume features pop culture tattoos, black and grey ones, and various other designs and styles. Take a look at this time-lapse where he's tattooing a large piece of a lion. Speaking about his tattooing style, he said, I never really stuck with one style of tattooing. Japanese to, you know, little cartoon characters to Paul Booth Flash or Bob Terrell or Guy Ashton's type stuff, you know. Since his success on the show, Tambi has also dabbled in painting, digital artwork, and logo design. Tambi has even inked himself on his wife, the mother of his kids. They must be really close for her to let him do that. He continues to live in Las Vegas and hones his skills at Bad Apple Tattoo Studio. Moving on to our next entry, the first female contestant to win the Ink Master title, Ryan Ashley. I'm drawing a jewelry box, except I wanted it to be prettier and it ended up looking like a caveman box. But before we get into this, here's a cool mashup involving both Ryan Ashley and DJ Tambi attempting a challenge. I'm trying to put a wood grain on my box. You have to either go to the library or look at magazines. Yeah, it's a lot easier nowadays, but I still like to draw on paper as much as I can. Ryan Ashley took home the winning title in the 8th season back in 2016, and she stuck around for a couple spin-offs as well. She was most notably in Ink Master Angels and served as a judge in the Grudge Match season. Her winning tattoo was a full-color 90s New School Hot Rod inspired design, which was absolutely outside of Ashley's comfort zone. Kelly Doty, the other finalist for Ink Master, picked the style for her to follow. Take a look at the tattoo and what she had to say about it. This is the opposite of what I normally do. He basically wanted me to prove that if I deserve the Ink Master title, I should be able to tackle any style and handle any challenge that was thrown at me. Ashley is renowned for her exquisite art that resembles lace, for her jewelry, and her black and grey tattoos. With a background in the fashion sector, she applies the artistic abilities she developed while working with lace and beads to the medium of tattooing. The result is a collection of beautiful and inspiring designs. 
From her Instagram account, we can confirm that Ryan Ashley is working as a resident artist at Elysium Studios, a tattoo parlor and gallery in Grand Junction, Colorado. She specializes in tattooing ornamental jewelry and works with Arlo Di Cristina, her husband. On to the next entry, an undisputed fan favorite, Sausage. I'm Walter Sausage Frank. I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada, and I've been tattooing for 13 years. They call me Sausage because my last name is Frank. But if you're honestly, if you're a really hot looking chick, I have a way longer story for that. Walter Sausage Frank, a tattoo artist with 14 years of experience and headquartered in Las Vegas, was first introduced to us in the fourth season. Sausage finally finished in second behind the late Scott Marshall, despite taking first place in four of the challenges that season. When Sausage returned to the battle in Season 7 as an experienced competitor, he managed to do pretty well before being eliminated with fellow heavyweight Jimmy Litwak in Episode 9. In 1999, Sausage first inked people at Larry Allen's Anchorage Tattoo Studio. He worked there as an apprentice before relocating to Phoenix, Arizona. Sausage spent nearly 13 years working at Club Tattoo. He collaborated with some legendary tattoo artists like Terry Wookie Hoffman, Joey Hamilton, Matt Gilgama, and Chris Garcia. Over the years, Sausage has garnered numerous honors and trophies. He's appeared in newspapers, internet pieces, and magazines. Sausage appreciates all tattooing techniques. He finds the most enjoyment in the attention to detail, which distinguishes him from other artists. He's always excited to work together with his clients to create stunning artwork. Sausage has a loving family with three boys named Coda, Keegan, and Parker. He's been married to his wife Crystal for the last 10 years, which is lovely. Anyway, here's a clip of his return as a coach on the show. If somebody wants to slam out six really horrible tattoos, then they can do that. That's not going to be my call. My strategy for quality versus quantity. He's currently playing his trade and tattooing at Revolt Tattoo, located in Salt Lake City, Utah. The tattoo studio is Sausage's stage. He's a true entertainer and not just a tattoo artist. In Salt Lake City, Sausage is a well-regarded and adored tattoo artist who enjoys making people laugh while producing exquisite tattoo work. But don't be fooled by his sense of humor, since he's a strong and ferocious competitor. Sausage has learned a thing or two about strategy and competition by working with Ink Master winner Joey Hamilton. Here's a clip from his return to Ink Master. The next artist standing between you and the title is known for his technical ability and his versatility. Hi guys. The next entry for today never won the title of Ink Master, but turned out to be way more successful than those who did. We're referring to Tommy Helm. The gallery with the tattoo studio was to provide a venue for, uh, for people that didn't have any other opportunity to, to show their artwork. One of the most adored artists from the first season of Ink Master is Tommy Helm. Helm moved on to another tattoo-related TV show, but during his time on Ink Master, he was just ousted and couldn't get his hands on the crown. In fact, Helm announced about Tattoo Nightmares, the tattoo cover-up show he helmed from 2012 to 2015 during the Season 2 Ink Master finale. He also offered to patch up a horrible pin-up tattoo one of the human canvases had gotten earlier in the season. He later returned to Ink Master in Season 9 to compete alongside his shopmates Marvin Silva and ultimately ranked in 6th place. Every viewer has a favorite competitor on the reality show they're watching, whether it's because they enjoy their personality or because they honestly think that they're talented. But it looks like folks are still upset that Helm, from season 1, didn't win the big prize after all these years. In the end, he didn't fare too badly for himself, becoming well known enough to join the cast of Tattoo Nightmares for all three of its seasons. Helm has always pursued an artistic lifestyle. He painted murals, painted garments, and used oil paints when he was a teenager, which led him to pursue painting as a vocation. Helm has recently been focusing on his artistic creations. He's very much successful and has his own store, Empire State Studio, which has more than 290,000 followers on Instagram. Here's a little about the studio. The gallery with the tattoo studio was to provide a venue for, uh, for people that didn't have any other opportunity to, to show their artwork. Helm has been discussed on social media recently because of Oliver Peck's disappearance from the show. Many fans have long cited him as the contestant who ought to have won season 1, and some even consider him the odds-on favorite to succeed Peck. Helm is still a major figure in the world of tattoo artists, whether or not he rejoins the Ink Master family. And so, we're gonna finish things off with one of the finest artists ever, Sarah Miller. Oh my god, that's amazing. This final tattoo shows that I am the best female in Ink Master history. Miller is passionate about traditional art. 
She had a successful career in graphic design and arts before tattooing consumed her life in 2009. Miller collaborated with various design firms on product branding initiatives during this time. She described herself as being very insane and claimed that she had what it took to win the competition. Miller focuses on portraiture and pins in her tattooing designs. She claims she loves pushing the boundaries of what is called tattoo art and prefers illustrating through her ink work more than anything else. Take a look at one of her portrait tattoos and how she went about getting it done. To see this bright, vibrant, colorful kit. She wants it in color. Am I going to be shooting myself in the foot if I do this in color? This is a huge risk. Right. I would love to rock a colored portrait. Okay. But if I do that, all right, like we're gonna get room to do ass. I mean, I don't mind it in black and white. I don't. You can still capture him in it. Yes. Amazing. That's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Thank you so much. Also, here's a look at one of her Star Wars inspired pieces. He opened for me changing up the background a little bit. What kind of background are you looking for? I'm thinking like a galaxy with the other half. Nah, I'd rather just keep the focus on just the clone trooper. I don't think that's going to fulfill this challenge. I don't want to go home for it. Here's the background. That is the coolest thing in the world. I come up with the idea. Oh, wow. That is phenomenal. Holy. A range of emotional and passionate speeches characterized Sarah Miller's season 2 debut as a well-known portrait artist. She later finished second in season 2, but made a lasting impression on everyone. In season 3, she even featured as a human canvas. She was back on the show in season 7 when she competed once more and finished in 10th place. Later, she appeared on Ink Master Angels and took on the role of a coach in season 12 of Battle of the Sexes. However, her television career has also evolved beyond Ink Master. Watch how Miller worked with the previous canvases to get a new design done. I'm really liking the idea that he's presenting to me, but I think that it might be a little bit too busy. Take possibly right around six to six and a half hours. Sarah decided that I needed to get some pimples eradicated off my back. Talking about her journey on the show, she said, But being on the show itself, it was a very trying experience. It was a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of being creative on the spot, and trying to please not just myself, but my client and the judges and the entire audience on, on the, the whole show. Miller starred in the Spike TV pilot Ink Shrinks, which was later released as a TV movie in 2014. The idea was quite original in the world of tattoo TV. Miller and two tattoo artists worked with a group of therapists to provide clients with tattoos that would aid them in coping with trauma and psychiatric issues. In essence, it stems from the profound sense of healing that getting a tattoo may bring to the recipient. Take a look at the wide range of awards and accolades she's won over the years. That speaks a lot about her talent and skills. On the work front of things, Miller owns the Wild Child Tattoo, a store in Pittsburgh. In 2018, she attracted widespread recognition after finishing a gigantic Steeler sleeve that had taken her 5 years to complete. With that, we've sadly come to the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed it! Do you remember any other Ink Master contestants who were successful? Let us know in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching, guys!